When I first heard about Attack on Titan back when it was first announced, my first impression was that I thought it was going to be like a pretty okay series. I don't know if it was going to be all that great. It seemed like it might just be like a regular shonen action show, like a Naruto or Bleach kind of thing. But then once the show came out and everyone started talking about it and I decided to give it a watch, I realized that my expectations were not quite exactly what the show was going to be. Now, Attack on Titan has gotten lots of reviews and lots of people have talked about it, and I, I will say that I think it is overrated. What it means for an anime to be overrated is that it's not that I think it's bad, it's that I think that everyone else likes it more than they probably should. That it's a show that doesn't quite live up to the reputation that everyone's been giving it. Uh, it's a show that gets a lot of 10 out of 10s, and people think that it's like the greatest show ever, but it's not the greatest show ever. It's a show that is very good, but it has flaws, and you you can't have a show that has flaws and it's a 10 out of 10. The characters in this show, some of them are kind of memorable and some of them aren't really. The characterization is a little bit uneven. Sometimes it seems like they were breaking character, but otherwise, for the most part, they were kind of memorable. Aaron Yeager is a guy who starts off as a kid and he sees his mom get killed and he decides that he wants to kill all of the Titans. The Titans are these big naked guys who eat people and they're attacking the city and so Aaron's like I'm gonna kill all the Titans. Aaron is a serviceable main character. He's not the best main character ever but he's not the worst. He is does his job. He's got this girl named Mikasa. Misaka? Mika Mikasa? She's super hot and she's got abs of steel and she's like the coolest and she fights the Titans and she protects him because he's weak. Then there's that blonde kid and uh, I kept expecting that he was going to get eaten, but he never did. Lots of people die in this show, and that makes it really suspenseful. You never know who's going to die. You could be watching an episode and thinking a character is going to be a real character, but then they end up being a dead character, and you never see it coming. It's like every single time it happened, it was completely shocking, and I never expected anyone to die, because you don't expect that from a show. You watch most shows, and characters don't die, but in this show, characters do die, and it's a big shock. It's a big surprise. It's not like Bleach where characters never die, they always keep coming back, or One Piece where the main characters never lose across 700 chapters. The characters die and it's unexpected. I never would have expected characters to die. It's so out of left field that death would occur. The scene where Aaron's mom dies in the first episode was so gripping and emotional because it was his mom. It's like when Bambi's mom dies in Bambi, like it's the most sad thing I've ever seen. And it really makes you connect with Aaron because you now think that you want the Titans to die. And so you now, Aaron, are in mindset titan kill. I gotta admit that while I was drawn in by the first few episodes, I thought the show's pacing kind of got a little bit awkward after that. There's a part where Aaron has to lift a boulder and it takes like 10 episodes and it sort of got boring in the middle there. And then the rest of the show was really boring. Um, but there was still enough mystery to keep me interested. When a show does a good job of building up its mystery, then it can get away with a lot because you want to see what's going to happen, so you just keep watching even though it's a boring piece of sh- Even though you, you know, are, are not necessarily invested in everything that happens, it can still be involving because the world is so interesting. It's got so much world building and the Titans- What's up with the Titans? You just gotta know what's up with the Titans. Every episode, I was on the edge of my seat. What's up with the fucking Titans? What? What the fuck is up with the Titans? What the fuck are they? The action scenes are incredibly well animated, and everything in this show looks absolutely beautiful. The browns are the brownest they've ever been in any show. It's so brown that it feels like I'm looking at real brown. The sky is always blue, and very blue. There's some forests and titans. And I guess the titans are red and they, they sort of stand out against the brown. Everything else is brown. It's very brown. And it looks good and they fight and it's like, 
Whoa! How did you even animate this? This is like magical. How is this fucking possible? I've never seen anything like this in all of anime. I would wager to say that Attack on Titan is the most consistently amazing looking anime that I've ever seen in my life. The soundtrack by Hiroyuki Sawano is also absolutely amazing, just like every other soundtrack he ever does, because he's the greatest soundtrack composer of the modern age. You know, having a good soundtrack and good visuals doesn't necessarily make a good show, but it can underscore what's good about a show. Having great music can really push up the level of everything else in the show, because good music is cool, and directing... It's got directing. Even though I found 75% of the show boring and consider all of the characters to be inconsistent and somewhat flawed, and even though the story is somewhat emotionally manipulative and has shitloads of plot holes, nonetheless, I think the strengths of this series outweigh the problems with it because it's fun to watch and the action scenes look good. So I'm giving this one an 8.7 out of 10. It's a good show, even if it's not perfect, and I... I, uh, it's better than Sword Art Online, which is like a six.